Please open your Bibles with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. I love Easter. I love Good Friday. I love the Easter season. As we talk about the crucified, buried, risen Savior, all of that for you and for me. It's the highlight of the Christian experience to rejoice and celebrate his glorious resurrection. But oh, how the world hates the cross. I want to talk to you today about why the world hates the cross of Christ. The world truly hates Calvary, the cross, the shed blood, the gospel. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 17 through 24. For Christ sent me not to baptize, Paul said, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For after that in the wisdom of God the world by wisdom knew not God, it pleased God by the foolishness of preaching that gospel to save them that believe. For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified, unto the Jews a stumbling block, and unto the Greeks, the Gentiles, you and me, foolishness. But unto them which are called, saved, born again, both Jews and Greeks or Gentiles, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. The world hates the cross of Christ. Whenever I go to Israel, and I've been there 16 times, the highlight is always that day when we take our group up to Calvary, up to that place where 2,000 years ago, our Lord Jesus, between two thieves, died for you and for me. And then we always go right down into the garden tomb area, and we always have a service. We have music and hymns singing and praying and preaching about the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going there, by the way, for those of you in this auditorium, and listening by radio or television anywhere. I'm taking a tour September 4 through 14. I'm taking a tour personally to Israel. We call it Israel 94. If you'd like to go with us, you'll be a part of a service at the garden tomb and in the upper room and on the Mount of Beatitudes where the Lord gave the Sermon on the Mount. We'll have our Sunday morning service there. You'll have a wonderful uh, sunset tour across the Sea of Galilee, preaching, teaching, witnessing. We'll have a baptismal service in the Jordan River where John baptized Jesus. And some who come to the Lord on that trip will no doubt follow the Lord in baptism there in the Jordan River. The tour is sponsored by the Thomas Road Baptist Church. And if you'd like to go, just write to Israel 94 here at TRBC. The box number is 4303 Lynchburg, Virginia 24502. And ask for an Israel 94 brochure and go with us. Your Bible will never again be the same to you. Your Christian walk will change radically and forever. Galatians 6.14, Paul said, But God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me, and I unto the world. The name of Jesus Christ is offensive to the world. You mention the name of Jesus Christ in a seance where devil worshipers are meeting, and the place goes haywire. The name of Jesus Christ, that name that is above every name, and the reason the name of Jesus Christ is so offensive is because of the cross. If he had just been a teacher like Muhammad or Confucius or Mary Baker, Glover, Patterson, Eddie, or Joseph Smith or whomever, if he'd only been a teacher or religious leader, no one would care. 
But because of his cross, because of Calvary and the empty tomb, the world hates Jesus Christ. Why is that? Well, you know, we're told in America today, don't pray in Jesus' name. I've been often invited to speak to civic clubs and, and secular groups and, and, uh, or asked to pray. But uh, very often someone will say, now when you pray, please, at the end of the prayer, don't say in Jesus' name. Just say in our Lord's name or in His name or in thy name, but don't say it in Jesus' name. You'll offend somebody. Why? Because of the cross. Because of the cross. And, and you know, the ACLU has serious problems with a nativity scene, a creche. They don't want a nativity scene on public property anywhere. They're not opposed to the birth of Christ, but they know because he was the virgin-born Son of God, he also was the Christ of the cross. They hate the cross, and thus they hate Christ. Prayer in schools and voluntary prayer in public schools, oh, it's raging down in Mississippi right now. They fired a school principal, a black man named Bishop Knox, wonderful man of God, because the children came to him and said, could we have a prayer over the public address system? And we won't even mention the name of Jesus. We'll just have a prayer that uh, is read every morning by the students and so forth. And he researched it, looked at the law, and said, yes, I think that's all right. And so they did it, and the ACLU got into the picture and got the school board to fire the principal. America, why do they hate prayer so much? Because prayer in the name of Jesus has its reference right to the cross of Christ, and they hate the cross, hate the cross. You know, uh, Yucca Valley, California, the state Supreme Court decided that the U.S. Constitution, this was two years ago, prohibited invocations at commencement exercises. And keeping within the controversial ruling, I'm reading from an AP article of, of a year ago, and I read it to you, students at a Riverside County High School in Yucca Valley found a a unique way to invoke God's blessing upon their graduation ceremony. The ceremony proceeded with the typical addresses to the graduating class. Each one was challenging and inspirational, but only the, the one delivered at the closing received a standing ovation. The graduating student walked proudly to the microphone to deliver his address. A sneeze. The entire student body, with that cue, stood to their feet and in unison said, God bless you. The audience erupted in applause for the blessing that was bestowed upon the graduating class. Well, the Supreme Court has since then ruled that prayer initiated by students in an in invocation or whatever is legal. It is constitutional. And let me say to the school children all over America listening right now, don't you let your principal, your school superintendent, or your school board, or anybody else deny you your civil right of free speech. If you want to pray out loud, do it. It is not illegal. And if you want to pray at a convocation or a, a commencement or a baccalaureate, by the way, just don't tell the principal everything. You know, only a fool tells everything he knows. Uh, just get up there and do what you want to do. Amen. You know, this is a free country. And we don't have to be ashamed of God, so pray. Get up there and pray. I bumped to an, into an atheist Easter time a few years ago in the post office of all places. And he was there grumbling about the fact that we were observing Easter. He said, that's, that's ridiculous. This, uh, the country, all everywhere. And, then, and, he, and, I, and I said, well, you know, it's a religious holiday. And I, he said, well, you Christians, you, you impose on us. You have Christmas, you have you have Thanksgiving. Those are religious holidays, Easter and so forth. I said, well, you, you atheists have April 1st. I don't know why it bugs you. <laughs> the, uh, so they, they hate Christ because they hate the cross. They hate the church, too. Boy, do they hate the church because of the cross. It's not the meetings that we have. It's not the hymns we sing. They love religiosity. They just don't want mention about the cross. That's why they want to tax the churches, and that's why you hear all this church and state separation stuff. That's not in the Constitution. That's just in Bill Clinton's head. That is not in the Constitution. Let's talk about why, why the church, why the Bible, why the cross is so offensive to the Lord Jesus, uh, to the world. First of all, because the cross of Jesus Christ condemns sin. 
the very fact that our Lord Jesus had to die upon a cross and shed his blood, God, just and holy God, dying for unjust and unholy man, means that sin is so sinful, sin is so wicked, that only God, dying and shedding his blood, God himself, could atone for the awfulness and the wickedness of our sin. And the world doesn't like to be told you're a sinner. None of us like that. I don't like to be told, you know, before I got saved, you're a bad person, you're a sinner. We're all bad people except for Christ, even after we're saved. We don't like to hear that. And the cross condemns sin, and therefore, whenever a cross is assembled somewhere, here comes the ACLU and the Americans United for Separation of Church and State and all the other Christ-haters and God-haters wanting to get that cross down. We've got to get it off the fire station, get it off the city hall steps. We've got to get that cross down. Why? Because the cross condemns sin. The cross says the whole world is in sin. There's no hope, no help for anyone except in the cross and the shed blood of our Lord Jesus upon that cross. The world hates the cross because the cross reveals the deity of Jesus Christ. Christ is not just a teacher, a great example, a prophet, a religious leader. But he said, the Father and I are one. We who know Christ as our Lord and Savior know that in the beginning was the Word, capital W, the Logos, Christ. And the Word was with God. And listen, the Word was God. We believe as, as Christians and followers of Christ that Jesus Christ is God, a very God, co-equal with God the Father and God the Holy Spirit in all attributes pertaining to deity. And the cross reveals his deity because at Calvary, God died for lost mankind. And everyone who hates Christ hates him because of the cross. Because if Jesus Christ is God, then Muhammad is not. If Jesus Christ is God, then uh, Confucius is not. If Jesus Christ is God, the very word God, the ultimate and only one, the supreme being indicates there is no other God. Therefore, our Lord Jesus in John 14, 6 said, I am the way, the truth, the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And then the world hates the cross because the cross confirms the Bible. You know, this Bible, this wonderful book, the Bible, all 66 books, 1189 chapters, all of it was inspired by God's Holy Spirit and is therefore inerrant and infallible. And the fact that Christ died upon that cross in fulfillment of Old Testament Scripture establishes once and forever that this book, the Bible, is indeed the Word of the living God. This book right here, that Bible in your hand is God's Word and the evolutionists don't want to hear that. The abortionists don't want to hear that. The anti-family people don't want to hear that. The moral perverts don't want to hear that. If this Bible is true, then all sex outside of marriage is wrong. Premarital, extramarital, whatever. If this Bible is true, homosexuality is moral perversion. If this Bible is true, abortion is the murder of unborn children. If this Bible is true, then Jesus Christ is God and the Bible is the Word of God. Therefore, the world hates the cross. The world hates the cross because the cross declares exclusive salvation. There is no salvation in any, any other. In the name of Christ, salvation is in the name of Christ and in no other name. There is none other name under heaven given among men, the Bible says, whereby we must be saved. You can't be saved by joining a church, by being baptized. You can't be saved by doing penance. You can't be saved by working for salvation, by good works. You can't be saved by whatever men can contrive. Salvation is in and through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. The world hates the cross because the cross unveils the living Christ. The living Christ. The only way to know Jesus is at the cross. His virgin birth was wonderful. No one was ever born as he. His preexistence beyond comprehension 
Who else in this world existed before he was born? But in the beginning was the Word. There never was a time when he, Christ, was not, nor shall there ever be a time when he is not. He is eternal. He is from everlasting to everlasting. God, wonderful in his preexistence, marvelous in his life. No one ever lived on this earth sinlessly, but Jesus did. But the thing that makes Jesus stand apart from all others is that one day he went to a cross. And he who knew no sin became sin for us, and in his own body paid our sin debt in full forever. That is why the world hates the cross. The seven last statements of the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior on the cross, unveiled the living Christ to all the world. Statement number one, among the seven final statements of the Savior at Calvary, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Luke 23, 34. Hear our Lord Jesus with those words, forever and ever established his compassion for the lost. Jesus loves lost people. It is not the will of God that any should perish. God loves the murderer. God loves the homosexual. God loves the adulterer. God loves the thief. God loves the robber. God loves you. God loves me. Black, white, red, yellow. God's no respecter of persons. And from the cross, Jesus unveiled, said, I have compassion for all men, and I do not will that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. His second statement from the cross, Verily I say unto, unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. Luke 23, 43. And when our Lord said to that, to that, uh, those words to that be believing thief beside him on the, the other cross, he indicated his commitment to soul winning. He was winning a man to Christ even while he was dying. He was telling us of the priority of getting people saved, of leading people to the Savior while they are breathing, even in the last moments of life. His third statement, woman, behold thy son, behold thy mother. John 19, 26 and 27, as he told John and Mary, get together. John, take care of Mary. He was showing family responsibility. What a message. Our Lord Jesus was saying to all men and to all peoples everywhere and every age, you're responsible for your family. You're to honor your parents and love your wife and love your husband and care for your children and obey your parents. Family responsibility. All this at the cross. His fourth statement from the cross, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Matthew 27 and verse 46. And he was speaking to the heavenly Father who for that brief moment by necessity turned his back upon his son, separation from God, the payment, hell embodied in the Lord Jesus. He was saying that my personal relationship with the Father is of ultimate importance to me and ought to be to us. And then his fifth statement, I thirst, John 19, 28. I thirst. Human need. He displayed his humanity on the cross. He thirsted, just like you would, without water, dehydrated, dying, bleeding. There for hours on the cross of Calvary. I thirst. He displayed his humanity. The world hates the cross because Jesus said on that cross, it is finished. Statement number six, John 19, 30 displaying total obedience to the Heavenly Father. The Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost, Jesus said. He said, I have come to die. I was sent to die. I must obey the Father. And when Simon Peter said, Oh, you will not die. You cannot be crucified. Jesus said, Get thee behind me, Satan. I came to die. Total obedience. That's the unveiled Christ, and that is the example we are to emulate. Statement number seven, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. Luke 23, 46, absolute surrender to his Father. The, cro the world hates the cross because the cross unveils the living Christ as in no other portion of Scripture. Do you know the Christ of the cross? Do you love Calvary? Do you love Jesus? Do you know him as your personal Lord and Savior? I didn't ask you, are you a Baptist, are you a Catholic, are you a church member? I ask you, do you know Jesus Christ, the crucified, buried, risen Savior, as your own personal Lord and Redeemer? Have you invited him into your heart? If you have not, today is the day. 
You'll never get to heaven without him. Let's bow our heads in prayer.